Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is Maria Tina Valerie Dejano of BSC 2C. And for today's video, this is for our Engineering Utilities 2, which we will be tackling about Module 1, Building Electrical Systems. And without further ado, let us proceed to our discussion. Topics to be discussed in this video are Electrical Theory, building electrical equipments and materials, and building electrical design principles. Before we proceed to the topic of the video, let me first discuss to you what is electric electrical theory. Well, this refers to the body of scientific principles and concepts that explain the behavior and operation of electrical circuits and systems. It encompasses various fundamental ideas and laws that govern the flow of electrical charge, voltage, current, resistance, and power in electrical systems. Understanding electrical theory is essential for designing, analyzing, and troubleshooting electrical circuits and devices. So let us recall what is electricity. Well, electricity is a property of matter that results from the presence of movement of electrical charge. According to modern theory, matter is electrical in nature. It is a fundamental force of nature and plays a crucial role in our everyday lives. Electricity can be generated, transmitted, and utilized for various purposes, including powering houses, industries, and electronic devices. The structure of matter refers to the composition, arrangement, the principles that make up all substances in the universe. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass, and it exists in various forms, including solids, liquids, and gases. The understanding of matter, matter structure has evolved over time through scientific discoveries and theories. At most fundamental level, matter is composed of atoms. An atom is the smallest unit of an element that retains its chemical properties. Atom consists of three main subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Molecules are the fundamental units of chemical compounds. They are formed when two or more atoms chemically bond together. Atoms within, within a molecule are held together by strong forces of attraction known as chemical bonds. Molecules can be composed of atoms of the same element or different elements. Elements are substances made up of only one type of atom. The periodic table of elements organizes the known elements based on their atomic number, which corresponds to the number of protons in their nuclei. Each element has unique chemical properties due to the specific arrangement and number of its protons, neutrons, and electrons. Compounds are substances that are formed when two or more different elements chemically combine in a fixed ratio. Mixtures are a combination of two or more substances that are physically combined but not chemically, chemically bonded. Let us now proceed to the basic data of an atom. Atoms consist of three main subatomic particles, namely protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons are electrically neutral, and electrons carry a negative charge. Protons and neutrons are located in the nu nucleus, which is at the center of the atom, while electrons orbit the nucleus in specific energy levels or electron shells. Atomic number represents the number of protons or electrons in an atom, while atomic mass represents the sum of protons and electrons in an atom. Ion is an atom or a group of atoms that have a net positive or negative charge resulting from an equal number of positively charged protons and neg negatively charged electrons. Shell is an energy level or region about the nucleus of an atom in which electrons move. The atom have five shells, namely the K-shell, which is the first orbit, the L-shell, which is the second orbit, the M-shell, which is the third orbit, and N-shell for the fourth orbit, and the O-shell, which is the fifth 
Orbit, S-E-C-N-D, video. Valence electrons are the electrons found in the outermost shell, or the valence shell, or orbit of an atom. And here is some data about the atoms, where a proton has charge and mass along with the electron and the neutron. Now we proceed to the electrical classification of materials. First off, we have electrical conductors. These are materials that allow the essentially free passage of current when connected to a battery or other source of electrical energy. Example of electrical conductors are steel, gold, and copper. We have the second one, which is the electrical insulators. These are materials that possess low conductivity or offer a relatively high resistance to the flow of electrical current. They are also called as dielectrics. Example of these are rubber, glass, and dry wood. We also have the electric semiconductors. These are materials that have conductivity about midway between good conductors and good insulators. Example of semiconductors are capacitors, resistors, and diodes. Now, what is electric current? Well, electric current is the motion or transfer of charges from one region of a conductor to another. Its unit is the ampere, which is named after Andre Marie Ampere. Now, here are the following methods by which electric current can be produced. We have static electricity, which is from friction. Thermal electricity is electricity from heat. And piezoelectricity is electricity from pressure. Next, we have electrochemistry, which is electri electricity from a chemical action. Photoelectricity is electricity from light. Magnetoelectricity is electricity from magnetism. Now, let us proceed to the fundamental units of electricity. First, electric voltage. It is the driving force behind current flow. The unit of voltage is the volt or the letter V. Voltage level governs the amount of current flow. An increase in voltage causes more current flow and vice versa. Next is electric current. It is the motion of transfer of charges from one region of the conductor to another. Its unit is the ampere. Up next is the electric potential difference. It is the difference in the electric potentials of two charged bodies. Its units is the volt. Next is the electric resistance, or R. It is the property of a material that limits the amount of flow of current and converts electric, electric energy to heat energy. Its unit is the ohms. Since we talked about ohms, now we proceed to Ohm's law. According to Ohm's law, at steady state condition, the voltage across the resistor is directly proportional to the current flow through it with the temperature remaining. Here we have the formula of Ohm's law, where V is the applied voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance. Now to get the voltage, we need to multiply the current and the resistance. And to get the resistance, it is the applied voltage over the current. And to get the current, it is the applied voltage over the resistance. Here we have some conditions for Ohm's law. Ohm's law can be applied either to the entire circuit or a part of a circuit. When Ohm's law is applied to a part circuit, part resistance and the potential difference across the part resistance should be used. Ohm's law can be applied to both DC and AC circuits. In Ohm's law, there are some limitations. For metals that get heated up due to the flow of current through them. For electrolytes, where enormous gases are produced on either electrode. For vacuum, radio valves. For arc lamps. There is also limitations for semiconductors, for gas-filled tubes in which the ions are generated as a result of current flow, for appliances such as metal rectifier and crystal detectors in which the operation depends on the direction of the current. Electric power 
it is defined as the rate of which electrical energy is expended or used up. It is the rate electric energy that is converted into another form such as light, heat, or mechanical energy, or converted from another form into electrical energy. Its unit is in watts. Here are the formulas of the electrical power, where P is the electrical power in watts, and V is the voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance. Please note that 1 horsepower is equal to 746. We can identify the electric power in three different ways. First, we can multiply the voltage to the current. We can also square the voltage over the resistance. Or we can have also the current squared multiplied with the resistance. We all know what energy means, but let me discuss to you that energy is the capacity to do work. It is measured in joules. Electrical energy consumption, however, it is the rate at which power is consumed over a specific period of time. We have here the formula in getting the electric energy consumed. Now, let us first know that P is the electrical power in watts. C is time and W is electric energy consumed. Now to get the electric energy consumed or the W is that we multiply the electrical power to the time. We are now about to discuss the electric circuit. Now an electric circuit is a closed path through which electric current can flow. It consists of various components connected by conductive material such as wires and is designed to allow the controlled flow of electric charges. We have a closed circuit. It is an uninterrupted path that allows a continuous flow of current through an electric electrical circuit. In a building, the circuit is closed when a switch is turned on. Open circuit. If the path of current flow is interrupted such as if the switch in a circuit is open, which is turned off, an open circuit results. Short circuit, however, if an, in if an inadvertent shortcut develops in a circuit that permits current flow through an unintentional path, a short circuit is created. A short circuit occurs when a current leaks out of the intended conductor path, such as out of wire with damaged insulation. We have three types of circuit connections. We have the series circuit, parallel circuit, and combination circuit. Under the combination circuits, there are two, which is the series parallel circuit. It is a combinational circuit when simplified will result into a series circuit. Parallel series circuit, it is a combinational circuit when simplified will result in a parallel circuit. Series circuit. The circuit elements are said to be connected in series when they all carry the same current, as shown in the video. Now, the properties of a series circuit are the same current flows through all the resistance. There will be voltage drop across each resistance. The sum of the voltage drops is equal to the applied voltage. Now, here is the equivalent resistance of a series circuit. Now, R sub T is the total resistance. To get the total resistance, you add all the resistance present in the diagram, which is the resistance 1 plus resistance 2 plus resistance 3, and etc. Now, to get the current, as shown in the diagram, since the current is only 1, so the total current is equal to the current 1, current 2, and the current 3. Now, to get the total voltage, it is to add the voltages present in the diagram if ever the total voltage is not given. So we add voltage 1 plus voltage 2 plus voltage 3. To further understand, we have a sample problem. Four coils having resistances of 3, 5, 10, and 12 ohms are connected in series across 120 volts. 
determine A, equivalent resistance of the circuit, B, current flowing through the circuit, and C, the voltage drop across individual coils. Now, let us get first the A, for the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now, since earlier we discussed that to get the total resistance, we have the formula RT is equals to R1 plus R2 plus RT, R3 plus R4. And now we have the resistances of 3, 5, 10, and 12. We just added up and now we have the total resistance of 30 ohms. Now we proceed to getting the current flowing through the circuit. In ohms law, we have the formula of getting the current which is equals to total voltage over resistance. Now we have a total voltage of 120 and a resistance of 30. So 120 over 30 is equals to 4 amperes which is our current. For C, we are going to get the voltage drop across the little coils. Now remember that the formula for getting the voltage is equals to the current times the resistance. And with that, we substitute our given current, which is 4, to the given resistances. Now, for V sub 1, we have 12 volts. V sub 2, we have 20 volts. For V sub 3, we have 40 volts. And V sub 4 is 48 volts. Let us now proceed to the parallel circuit. Circuit elements are connected in parallel when the same voltage is common to all of them, as seen here in the video. Now we have the properties of a parallel circuit. First, the voltage across each resistance of the parallel combination is the same. There are as many current paths as the number of branches. The current in each branch is given by Ohm's law. The total current of the circuit is equal to the sum of branch currents. For the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit, where the total voltage is equal to voltage 1, that is equal to voltage 2, and that is equal to voltage 3. Now for the current, the total current is equal to the current 1 plus current 2 plus current 3. Now for the total resistance, it is 1 over total resistance is equal to 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2 plus 1 over resistance 3 or we can have it as the total resistance is equal to 1 all over 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2 plus 1 over resistance 3 and so on to further understand the topic we have a sample problem the equivalent resistance of four resistors joined in parallel is 20 ohms their currents flowing through them are 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1 ampere. Find the value of each resistor. Now, to get the value of each resistor, first, we must get the total current, which is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1, which is equal to 1.2 ampere. And, in getting the total voltage, it is equal to multiplying the total current plus the total resistance which is equal to 1.2 times 20 and we have a total voltage of 24 volts now in getting the value of each resistor we have the formula of getting the resistance which is v over i or the voltage over the current now for R sub 1, we have 24 over 0 0.6, which is equal to 40 ampere. For R sub 2, we have 24 over 0 0.3, which is 80 ampere. R sub 3, which is equal to 24 over 0 0.2, is equal to 120 ampere. And R sub 4, is equal to 24 over 0 0.1, is equal to 240 ampere. And that is how we get the value of each resistor. For the final part, we have the cost of electrical energy. A utility company will charge its customers for the electric energy consumed. Now, energy charge is the cost of the electrical energy consumed. Maximum demand is the user's highest rate at which energy is consumed in kilowatts. 
and demand charge is the billing fee related to the maximum charge. To further understand the topic, we have a sample problem. A 60 watt lamp remains lighted for 24 hours per day for 30 days. Determine A, the electrical energy consumed over this period, B, the energy charge for the billing period at the rate of 5.93 pesos per kilowatt hour. Now, first we get the A for the electrical energy consumed over this. Here we have the formula of electrical energy consumed, which is equals to electrical power times time. Now, as shown in the picture, we have 60 watts times 24 hours per day times 30 days per billing period. And the electrical energy consumed over this period is 43.2 kilowatt per hour. Proceeding to B, for the energy charge for the building period of a rate of 5.93 pesos per kilowatt hour. Now, in getting the energy charge, it is equal to the electric energy consumed times the cost of energy. Now, the energy charge is equal to 43.2 kilowatt per hour times 5.93 pesos per kilowatt hour. Now, the energy charge is equal to 256.17 pesos. And now we have reached the end of the video. I hope all of you have learned something from this video today. Now, stay tuned for my next video that will come up maybe anytime this week, perhaps. Just stay tuned for the next part of this video.